so we'll start with the course outline. So my email is michael.johnson at cynicalcollege.ca. So email me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And so we're gonna have a unit test, discussion board, online quizzes, midterm test, unit test two, online labs, final examination two. So weekly, there's gonna be a lab and a smart book assignment. And then week four, there's gonna be a test one. So that'll be on Blackboard. And then week seven will be midterm, week 10 will be the test two, Final exam will be test 14, uh, week 14, sorry. So that's the outline roughly. And the for this course, you're gonna have to purchase the uh, McGraw-Hill Connect. So I'm gonna show you the presentation on McGraw-Hill. So here's the presentation. So our section is NRH and the course URL for registering for Connect is this URL here. And this presentation is on Blackboard. So you purchase the code and then log in through the course URL here. So that's that's the that's how you do it. That's how you get in. So just let me know if you need help doing this. And it's good for uh, practice, like it's a good practice tool for you for class. And the login costs $89. So you can, you get the, you put your email in, your Seneca College email, then you purchase, and then you, yeah, you're, you access it. Let me know if you need any support on that. So we're going to start the PowerPoint. I'm just gonna bring it up here. Okay, uh, that's okay. Just let me know, like, if it if it doesn't come, uh, like. The, the, I made the assignments all due by December, just in case people have delays, et cetera, they can finish it up by December, but I recommend everyone to do it weekly. So we do it week by week, but I made it uh, all due mid December, right before the course ends, just in case people have too much on their personal lives. Like if it's like work, it's family, et cetera. Just, uh, yeah, like, so I'll give you more time. So I'm just gonna, not a problem. So I'm just gonna give me one second. I'm just gonna pause it for a second. So we're going to go through these learning objectives. We're going to go through the 10 key concepts to retain for a lifetime, what economics is, what the role of economic theory is in economics, what the difference between microeconomics is from macroeconomics, and what positive economics is from normative economics. We're going to talk about the trade-offs, opportunity costs, and attainable combinations, scarce resources, production possibilities analysis, increasing opportunity costs, and economic growth. We're going to go through economic growth and international trade and how they increase production. So the individual faces trade-offs, opportunity costs, choosing a little more or less, and the influence of incentives. And then we go through specialization of trade, the effectiveness of markets, the role of governance, uh, production and standard of living, money and inflation, inflation and employment trade-off. So economics is concerned with the efficient use of scarce resources to obtain the maximum satisfaction of society's limited, unlimited wants. So it's focused on we we only can we we have we can choose one thing over another, 
and we can't have both we can only hit, like we can just we have to choose one thing and then there's a trade-off to it because there's so let's say if we want to have cars so so we want to have cars we benefit through going from a to b but the cost is environmental degradation so that that's what happens so that's trade off so that's trade off and also uh we need like we can choose to uh like we can choose to build like we can choose to build something but we have to choose not to build something else our resources are limited yeah so like the resources are limited so we have to like we have to choose basically yeah so we have to make choices that are best for us in terms of like resource use the scarcity of economic resources restricts options and requires choices there's no free lunch so opportunity cost of a choice but is forgotten for that choice so like for example you could be working a nine five job and the opportunity cost of that job is not working another job and making that other job's salary. So like, for example, you could, example, you could work at a fast food place for 15 an hour while instead you could be working at a teaching place let's say for forty dollars an hour so uh the opportunity costs of working at a fast food place is the forty dollars an hour you could make doing something else So can you think of any other opportunity costs in your life? Like, can you think of anything that you could be doing that would make more money? Uh, have your own business? Exactly, yeah. That's a good, that's exactly what I'm getting at, so that's a good good job good job on that one so like yeah instead instead of working 40 hours a week making let's say let's say like two thousand dollars per week you could become a real estate agent and make ten thousand dollars per week for this yeah. same 40 hours so like that's like something that you could you know uh yeah that, that was uh, yeah you're right so you could be working 40 hours still but you're you're making a lot more so that's a good example uh can anyone think of other examples of that So yeah, you could also be a financial advisor, mortgage agent, and make more than two thousand dollars per week for the same amount of time working. So, um, looking at opportunity costs is very important in terms of work. Like, you could be making 
let's say two thousand dollars in one place for 40 hours while you could be making let's say ten thousand dollars a week for the same 40 hours of time but since you because you're doing something else so looking at opportunity costs of your time is very important like you could be working 40 hours a week 15 dollars an hour or you could be working 40 hours a week for like 40 50 dollars an hour so those uh those looking at the lost money for doing something else is very important so purposeful behavior people pursue opportunities in order to increase their utility which is the satisfaction a person gets from consuming a good service so um you so so you want marginal benefit uh you want the marginal benefit equal to marginal cost to make it most efficient so when so in this case you want to operate when marginal benefit equals marginals. yeah that's most efficient Scientific methods is observed, then formulate a hypothesis and test the hypothesis and accept, reject, or modify the hypothesis, and then continue to test the hypothesis if necessary. So, so then we'll go through simplifications. A lot of theories in economics are simplified. Uh, there are a lot of, it's mostly a simplification of the real world thing. Uh, and they leave out a lot of details because, because a lot of things that would change in the real world. And also ceteris paribus is when one, one thing affects another, but you got to keep everything else the same. So it doesn't really work in real life. Like you could say that, um, you could say that an increase in demand will increase GDP. That's set, so that that's true if everything else outside of that is held the same. But the problem is in real life, it's not like that. There's other things in play. Problem with, excuse me, the problem with economic theories is that they don't hold up in real life because there's so many other things happening and you need to, you need to factor in other variables. And the, the problem is economists don't usually do that. So microeconomics is focused on individual units. So it's like somebody buying a coffee at Starbucks through microeconomics. Macroeconomics would be, let's say the government and how they purchase things or tax people. That's macroeconomics. So macroeconomics is like all the country. Microeconomics is if you buy like a coffee from Starbucks, go to a store, et cetera. Then positive economics are focused on statistical relationships. So like, let's say uh, inflation is caused by higher money supply. And then normative economics is mostly focused on like opinions, like, you say, oh, I am a huge uh, fan of Keynes. Like, like you could say Keynesian economics works all the time. That would be normative economics. It works sometimes. It doesn't work sometimes. Like, it goes back and forth. It just depends on the situation. So that would be normative. So individuals need to make choices because economic wants are unlimited, but the means are limited. So you need to make choices because we only have a limited amount of resources and we, we have to choose where they go. They have to go somewhere, but they can't go to another place if it goes somewhere else. Like, let's say you put, you put all your uh, resources into making cars, then you can't make houses, right? Like, you need to choose. And so there's limited, there's limited income slash resources but there was unlimited wants, so you can, so you just keep wanting things, but you got to choose what you can, like, you got to choose what to, like, what you can have, because uh, you only have limited resources. So the problem with this graph, like this chart here, is Canada's fourth in average income. However, there's a lot of problems with inequality. Uh, the uh, the richest one percent of Canada owns about half of the wealth of Canada, and then the other ninety nine percent owns the other half of wealth, 
and the problem and that's a big problem because uh, the the richest one percent are doing very well and they don't have any problems with income but people that are on the 99 percent, they have a lot of issues with paying for housing uh, a lot of other expenses and the distribution of income is very is very unequal in canada so the budget line uh the budget line it shows what we can afford with limited resources. So in this case, we can afford six DVDs and zero bucks, five DVDs and two bucks, four DVDs and four bucks, three DVDs or six bucks, and season six bucks, um, two DVDs and eight bucks, one DVD and 10 bucks, and zero DVDs and 12 bucks. So we can do that. Uh, those are all along this line. So we can, so anything along this line we can do. Anything below the line we can do uh, because we have enough resources to pay for all of that. But anything outside of the line to the right of it, we can't pay for it because we don't have the resources. So, um, yeah. So anything below the line we can pay for and on the line we can pay for, but anything above the line. We can pay for. So scarce resources that we have are land, labor, human capital, cap investment, entrepreneurial ability. So human capital is like education in our labor. So entrepreneurs, they take initiative, they make business decisions and innovate and bear risk. So being an entrepreneur is good. The reason why it's good is because almost all wealth flows to the entrepreneur. However, uh, all the rest goes to the entrepreneur. But it's worth it because like, I'm gonna show you a video. Just give me one second, I'm just gonna bring it up. So like it is worth it because, because the amount of money that employees make is very low compared to the entrepreneur. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you why. I'm just gonna bring up the video. share this so i'll just a screen share so people making less than half a million dollars a year they earn 75 percent of their income from salary wages and the paycheck while people that make between half a million and a million per year make about half of their income through salaries wages and the paycheck however when people make 10 million dollars or more a year, 15% of their income comes from salaries, wages, and the paycheck. So the other 85% comes from, from ownership. So ownership of real estate, stock, and other investments. So that's 85% so of a person's income, if they're making over $10 million a year, is from investments. And it goes up and up. So like, as as they go up to let's say they're making a billion dollars a year it's closer to 99 percent their income comes from stock and other investments so if if you want to become a billionaire it's only through investments it's not through salary or wages you could be comfortable in salary and wages but you'll never become a billionaire so a good way to become that wealthy is through real estate and I'm currently a mortgage agent and I can support you in the application process. Just contact me at www.mortgagesbymj.ca. And you see this through Elon Musk is worth $300 billion roughly. And 99% of his pay is through ownership and almost 0% is through wages slash salary. It's mostly through his stock and investments in real estate, stock, and other investments. And then Warren Buffett, he's made $100,000 per year for the last 40 years in salary and wages. His net worth today is $108.3 roughly. 
and uh, that is almost 100% through stock and other investments, including real estate. And then Jeff Bezos, he his base salary uh, since 1998 has been $81,840 from Amazon. And uh, he made about $1.8 million in salary during that period. And today his net worth is over $100 billion, and that's almost 100% through investments and almost 0% of your salary. So the moral of the story is investments are where over 99% of all, all money is made. And you can do that through real estate. So I wanted to show you that video because it's true. The nine, more than 99% of income comes from ownership. So like about 99% comes from ownership of stock, real estate, and then less than 1% comes from salary. That's that's where the richest 1% of the country, they're only rich because of ownership. There's a few that are rich because of salary, but very few. It's mostly because they own the companies and their workers are part of 99%. So getting ownership in something is really important. Like owning owning a piece of your business, like if it's if it's just at least own some like own stock own own real estate etc like even if it's a little bit just get started because the money doesn't flow to wages like it, it does but not that much but it, the the like becoming wealthy is only through ownership unfortunately the so full so with the production possibilities model, they assume full employment, fixed resources, fixed technology, two goods, consumer goods, and capital goods. So here, uh, if if you're on the line, if you're on A, B, C, or D, or E, or in the blue part of the curve, all of that's attainable. So you can get all of that with current resources. So anything, anything here is achievable with current resources. And then anything outside this curve is not achievable with current resources. So in order to, so I'm gonna ask the class, what would have to happen for us to, to get, you know, for us to move over here, like to have more, like in order to, to come out here like what would have to happen for us to um shift the graph right and be in the unattainable region like what would have to happen like what would it have to happen to get to w yes exactly you got it good job justin uh increase in resources you got it that's great so yeah justin got it that's great so an increase in resources, you need that, or technology. Like if technology gets better, that will happen. So increase in resources or increase in technology. So here, when marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost here, that's the most efficient point. So this is, so if we're here, uh, we are at the line portion of the PPF. So if we're here in the middle, uh, when these lines hit each other, we're on this A, B, C, D, E line. So, so, uh, so in this case, in this case, we are on A, E, C, D, or E. So we're efficient. We are efficient when MB equals MC. So unemployment, the economy might not be operating at full employment. That's product. This points inside the production possibilities curve. So that's that's when um, the, there is unemployment. There is unemployment, and we are in recession. We are not using resources to their best use, basically, in this case. 
So move towards full employment yields a greater output. So in that case, if we are moving towards full employment, we are getting closer to the line where efficiency is. Closer to MV equals MC, marginal benefit equals uh, marginal cost. So yeah, so those arrows, as as uh, we're going to full employment, those arrows are moving basically. So yeah, uh, as Justin said, increases in factor supplies would cause economic growth, shift out of the PPC. And then improved factor quality would also do that too. So quality of, uh, of resources wouldn't do that. And then technological advances as well. So all three. So increases in factor supplies, increased factor quality, and technological advances. So yeah, this is what happens if this is what happens if, if technology gets better, if resources get better in quality, if resources get better in quality. So with trade, it's important to, so trade works best when one country produces something with their lowest opportunity cost and another country produces something that has their lowest opportunity cost as well. So like, for example, uh, so for example, like the U.S., produces high-tech machinery because the opportunity cost of this is low for the U.S. While, let's say, uh, nations in, in Asia produce textiles because the opportunity cost is low for nations in Asia, and the U.S. sells high-tech machinery to countries in Asia, while countries in Asia sell textiles to the U.S. This is more efficient because the opportunity cost of producing textiles in the U.S. Is, is very high and the opportunity costs of producing high-tech machinery in some, in certain countries in Asia is high. So then, then they trade because this is most efficient. Specialization in trade is most efficient. So specializing in the products in producing, so specializing in producing a product with the lowest opportunity costs and trading is the most efficient outcome with trade. But however, there's a lot of issues with like this this is true, but what are the issues with like what are the issues with production across the world? Like like can you think of any issues that happen that you've heard of that happen with manufacturing in countries across the world? Yeah, dumping is yeah, that's a good that's a good answer. Yeah, dumping, so dumping is when you sell a product for way less than the competitor and drive them out of business. 
it is illegal based on the World Trade Organization, but companies still do it. So uh, that, that's a good that's a good answer. Uh, but the so what happens is there's a lot of like in like India, China, and other countries. There's a lot of uh, like forced labor that happens. There's uh, child labor, uh, unsafe working conditions. That does happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, working conditions for employees are bad. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Foxconn produces Apple iPhones and the working conditions are very bad uh, and they had to install nets at the facilities just like to so they had to install nets at the facilities on like oh so the staircases go up like this and then they had to install nets on the parts of the staircase that were um that were open so people don't like don't jump like they, they were caught by the nets and that's how bad it is in terms of working conditions in those uh, factories and i know there's a lot of child labor there's a lot of unsafe working conditions forced labor very bad pay very low pay so this is like in theory specialization in trade is is a good thing but the problem is there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues that happen with with the working conditions in these countries that produce like textiles and uh, a lot of the products that the U.S. Uh, trades for. So those are issues that that are not looked at enough. And and yeah, it's, it's there's there's two there's so many issues with it, and they're not looked at enough. So lowest opportunity cost trade is great in theory, but there's a lot, it's, it's a lot more complicated because the working conditions are just so bad over in like other countries. So there's a lot of issues with economic reasoning, including biases. So a lot of people make up their opinion before they see the data. That's a big problem. You got to use, like you got to evaluate the data and then make a conclusion and not come in with your conclusion already made. So that's a big problem because a lot of people they have a they already have a, a conclusion before they see the data and that's a big problem also uh correlation and causation like if you keep, they're not the same thing so like if one thing so like if one thing goes up and another thing goes up they do not necessarily cause each other To find causation, you have to do a lot of work. So you got to do a lot of work and figure out what makes sense. Like what makes sense? Like the so so like let's say the the temperature goes up by 40 degrees Celsius and tuition goes up by $2,000. They are correlated, but we don't know if it is causation. We need to do a lot of research and work to figure out if they are cause if they are causal so that's that's an important distinction so uh so don't say something causes another unless you've done a lot of research on it yeah the it's cause causation is incredibly hard so the next thing i'm just gonna bring up the next thing that we'll do So 
we'll try this. I'm just going to bring this up. So we'll play a game, everybody. So this, we haven't learned everything here yet. It's just more of an overview right now. So I'm just going to bring it up. Which one does everyone want to do? Do you want to do uh, Deceptive Dinos, Gold Quest, Crypto Hack, Fishing Frenzy, Book Rush, Battle Royale, Tower Defense, Cafe, Factory Rising, uh, or Classic? So the PowerPoint, I'll post it. So uh, what uh, what does everyone want to do? Which one? Which one do you prefer? Tower of Doom. Tower of Doom. I'll have to check if it's a homework based one. It might be a homework one. I'll check. Tower of Doom. So I'm going to post the whole, there's, uh, I'll post all the PowerPoints. So from uh, all the chapters, it's just posting right now. So classic, classic, let's see, Tower of Doom, is it? Oh, it's, it's just homework. I may assign, yeah, I may assign one for homework just for practice. It won't be graded. Yeah, I'll just put it in the... So we'll copy link. So click on this link and then uh, then you'll be on. Wait a bit until everyone gets in. Start in a second, I'm just gonna check. I just posted the homework, it's just it's just practice, no no grading. So it's on uh on uh blackboard. And anyone who hasn't gotten in yet, you can still join when starting. markets on ships. Job Statement that cannot be scientifically tested or verified requires a value judgment to be made. Statements that can be decided to play faster for the cold. There are finite. 
finite, limited resources, but infinite unlimited ones. What's that called? Goods and services, but they're in joint demands. Goods that are generally consumed together when there's an increase in demand for one, there will be an increase in demand. Income after tax. Good for which when incomes rise, demand will rise. What's the call? Good for which when incomes rise, demand will fall. What's the call? Thank you. 
Good witch is demanded for more than one use. What's that called? Good which is not demanded for its own sake, but because it's needed to produce a new good. demanded in the expectation that price will rise so the bar can sell it for a higher price than the future Quantity of a good or service that sellers are willing and able to sell at any given price and any given time. Payment from a producer to government levied as a percentage of the price of goods slash service. Payment from producer to government levied as a specific amount of money. Excellent spending, what's that called? Payment by government to firms to reduce the cost of production, what's that called? <laughs> if one good such service is supplied, the other is inevitably available as a byproduct, what's that called? Brian, Wasi, Justin, great job, everybody else. Awesome work, great participation. That was excellent. Yeah, great job, everybody. Excellent work on that. So we will do our next activity. I'm just gonna bring it up. So graphs require horizontal axis, vertical axis, independent variable, dependent variable, centers, pair of this. So in this case, the horizontal axis would have income. Income. Well, thanks, Deepak. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, great job, everybody. Uh, income Y is on the horizontal axis. Um, and then the consumption is on the vertical axis. And in this case, the independent variables on the uh, y-axis, which is different than, usually it's on the x-axis, but in this case, it's on the y-axis. Dependent variable is on the uh, horizontal axis. So they're positively correlated. So as consumption goes up, income goes up as well. 
So direct relationship is if one goes up and the other goes up. That's what you should call a direct relationship. An inverse relationship is when one goes down, one goes up. Can you think of any uh, direct and inverse relationships that you've seen? So there is an inverse relationship between, so for inverse relationships, uh, so interest rates and money supply. So in this case, uh, lower interest rate increases the money uh, is correlated with an increase in the money supply. So that would be an inverse relationship. So in this case, this shows that um, as, so the 0 0.5 is very important. So the 0, point, the 0 0.5 means that for every $1 increase in income, there is a 0 $0.50 increase in consumption. Uh, this is a direct relationship. That's very important for this. So it shows it shows it's very important for this. So for this one, this uh, chart here is this a inverse relationship or a direct relationship? Yes, excellent. Good job. Yeah. So as ticket prices go down, attendance goes up. Makes sense. Great job, Selena and Christopher. Excellent. That's great. You got it. So yeah, as ticket prices go down, attendance goes up. Makes sense. Cheaper to go to a concert. You go to like people go, right? So that's that's makes sense. So as like in this case, attendance goes up by 1000 per $2.55 decrease in the ticket price. So I'm assuming that the attendance is, yes, in thousands, yeah. So yeah, so attendance goes up by a thousand per two point five dollar decrease in the ticket price. So yeah, if the ticket price goes down by two point five dollars, attendance goes up by that. So if it's a vertical line, the slope is infinite. We'll never know what the slope is. But if if the slope is flat like this, horizontal, the slope is zero. So the the graph is in the form y equals a plus bx. So y is a dependent variable. A is the vertical intercept, B is the slope of the line, X is the invisible hand, and why market economies do a better job than demand economies, and circular flow model and market system deals with risk. So economic systems, they are different based on, they're institutionally based, and they're different based on decentralization and centralization of government control. So for laissez-faire capitalism, they, the government is mostly focused on just protecting private property and legal. So like those things, not anything else. So like healthcare, education, social safety net that's gone. And that's, they don't have that in that system. Command system is when the government owns all businesses. And North Korea, Cuba, and Myanmar have done that. The problem with that is there's a lot of corruption that happens with the command system. When the government owns all businesses, the government becomes very corrupt uh, and takes from those businesses. 
And also the problem is since the government owns these companies, the no one can own companies. It's the only, only the government owns companies. So there's no, there's no rich people except for like the government employees would be the rich people. And there wouldn't be any, like you couldn't make money off the stock market or real estate because the government owns all that stuff. So everyone else is poor. That's not working for the government and no one owns anything. So it doesn't work. Uh, unfortunately, laissez-faire doesn't work either. Command system and laissez-faire don't work um, ever. Uh, but uh, you need to have you need to have a mix. You need to have a mix. So a market system mixing the best parts of the command system and laissez-faire system are very important. So having private ownership, having enforcement of property rights, protecting people through the legal system, having some government ownership, and having ownership, a lot of ownership by private companies, you need to have a mix. Like having a mix of both is important. So private property, freedom of enterprise, freedom of choice, self-interest, competition, market enterprise. So you need all that to have a successful economy. So the countries that are more, that are mostly free to free, they have the highest like quality of life in the world. That includes the United States, Canada, Australia, Hong Kong, Singapore. However, when they have, when they don't have a lot of economic freedom, such as North Korea, Algeria, Mozambique, the quality of life is very low. So economic freedom is very important to quality of life. So it's important to have technology and capital goods because they allow for better efficiency. And you need money also because the problem, like we need money. The reason why we need money is because we can't trade, let's say a plane for rice, right? We need money because uh, we can't trade certain, like we can't trade like, let's say um, lobster for bread. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense. That's why we need money because we can't, uh, because goods are of different value. So market failures are, uh, by definition, if we produce too little compared to the efficiency or if we produce too much compared to efficiency. So we want to, so we don't want to produce too little or too much. We want to be where it's efficient. So that's what we want. And these are the five fundamental questions of producing. So what goods and services will be produced? How will the goods and services be produced? Who will get the goods and services? How will the system accommodate change? And how will this promote progress? So the system grows through technological advancements, innovation and product, innovation process, cost reducing, and capital accumulation. So, A good question. So uh, that's a good question, Christopher. So uh, when when we produce too much, the problem with that is, um, let's say it's, so let's say we're producing too much of something and it causes a lot of pollution. So we might be producing too much pollution and that's very bad for the environment. While if we produce the efficient amount, we won't have a lot of pollution. We'll have a, uh, some pollution, but it won't be that bad. But if we produce way more than efficient, then we might produce a lot more pollution. So it's important to stay at the efficient amount because uh, there's a lot of issues in terms of, let's say, resource depletion. Like if we're producing too much, there might be too many resources being used. We might cause a lot of pollution. Uh, we might... Like there might be a lot of issues in terms of environmental problems, like uh, like polluting the waterways, and it might be even a good that's not good for people. Like it might be, let's say, uh, alcohol, right? Like some alcohol is good in terms of like uh, social, but too much of it is a bad thing, right? Like you don't want to have people on the streets like drinking all the time. Like you just want to have it in a social occasion you don't want to have it all, all over the streets 
because like it can be it can be too it can be a problem if it's too much right so like you need to have the efficient amount not go beyond it Yeah, exactly. You're right. So like inventory costs, like we may not be able to store it. So that, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. That's a good point, Deepak. That's great. Yeah, like you need to be able to store it. So that's great. So market system is efficient in terms of resources, techniques, production, more efficient technologies. There's incentives in the market system. So if you own something, you're going to get incentives in terms of the uh, profits from ownership. Like there's incentives for entrepreneurs in the market system. There's no incentives for entrepreneurs in the command system. And then freedom, you're going to get rewards and penalties. The penalties will stop bad people from doing what they do. And then rewards will benefit good people for what they do. But like even like rewards are sometimes given to bad people too, uh, in terms of like, you know, scams, you know, but eventually the legal, the law enforcement takes them down usually. So um, command system didn't work in Soviet Union, Eastern Europe, and China. There's no incentive. Yeah, th that's one of the reasons why it didn't work. So the, uh, yeah. So businesses, like if you do want to start a business, you can start a sole proprietorship, which is an unincorporated business owned and operated by a single person. So basically, if you start a sole proprietorship right now, the money will flow to you and be taxed at your own personal income tax rate. The business is not different from you. So if they sue you, like if they sue your business, they're suing you. So like you need to have, you need to have insurance that protects you against that, like business insurance, et cetera. And then partnership is when you partner with somebody else and then you share the profits and losses. Um, however, you're still not protected because if they sue, like, if they want to sue your business, they sue you and your partner. But corporation, the good thing about a corporation, it's separate from you. So uh, whatever, so if there's a corporation goes bankrupt, you don't go bankrupt. So cor being a corporation is very important because uh, you don't have to worry about, like, if the, if the corporation goes bankrupt, you don't go bankrupt. So the circular flow model is, is great because, like, as a household, we buy products from businesses while businesses sell products to us. And then we sell products to these businesses and they buy products from us. That's basically how it goes. Yeah. So, so yeah, the firm's employees and suppliers receive their contract wages and payments, whether the firm is earning a profit or generating. They always make, they always make a salary as they're employed, if the firm's earning a profit or generating a loss. That's good, but it's still not an, it's still not as much as like the owners make. However, the owners, they take the risk. If the own, if the business is going under, the owners can lose all their uh, ownership. But if the business is doing well, then they're going to benefit way more than the uh, employees. Like the, there is a risk. There's a lot of risk to it, but uh, the benefits far outweigh the cost however it depends on the person you're talking to some people like being some people love to be an employee um like i know a lot of people that love being employees which is great you know it just depends on your personal preference if you want to if you want to be an owner slash boss or if you just like it being employee this game here it's so it's showing like showing life on the minimum wage so um would you want to so i'm going to ask the class uh would you find a job or exit yeah let's let's just Oh, okay, sorry. Um, so out of the jobs that you can pick, uh, would you do this job? Uh, so second shift, $14 an hour. Would you do this job? Uh, 
Oh wait, what, what happened? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I selected that one. I apologize. Uh, so sorry for that. Uh, so the I selected the fourteen dollar an hour job. The next question is: the Affordable Care Act requires you to get health insurance. The good news: your child is covered by the state. The bad: you aren't. Which plan do you want? Gold pay plan, the silver plan, or the bronze. That's, that's a good answer, yeah. I'd go with bronze too. Okay, we don't have a choice in that. Um, so we're far away from the job, so more money on commuting. Your new apartment is too small for your stuff. What do you want to do? Run a storage unit, have a yard sale, ask a friend to store it. Solid. So rent, have a yard sale. Uh, so it won't let me select asking in front of storage. So let's say I have a yard sale. So we only made $150 selling it. So then on the way to drop off your kid at school, something blew in your car. You don't know what's wrong, but it can't be good. What do you want to do? Pay to fix it, ask a friend for help, get it towed, or leave it and take the bus. Hey, ask a friend. Won't let me select ask a friend, sorry for that. Uh, pay, okay, pay. Pay to fix it. Charge a $5 bank fee because your parent account is below $50. Bank fees and overdraft charges overwhelmingly impact low-income groups which is why many skip the bank altogether in favor of check cashing services. Your child's class is going on a field trip to the Natural History Museum. The trip costs $15. What do you want to do? Okay. okay. One of your coworkers has gotten seriously ill because your company doesn't offer sick days. Everyone is contributing $20 to help her out. What do you want to do? Pitch in or say you've got your wallet. It's a hard question. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really hard question. Yeah. Um, your family pet is sick and won't get better without treatment. What do you want to do? Like these are real situations. Like this is yeah, these are these are real situations. Suffer, put to sleep. Um, pay. I'll just keep checking. Uh, suffer, put to sleep, pay, pay. So two, say pay. Two, say sleep. Suffer. Two, say suffer. Sleep. Uh, three said sleep. Uh, who else? One said pay. Can't afford. So let's just say put to sleep. So we ran out of money in day of nine. It's, yeah, there's, this is, yeah. So we ran out of money in day nine. Like that's, this is like something, this is something that a lot of people deal with. And uh, yeah, this is, this is the reality of a lot of people out there deal with this. And uh, like my goal with this course is to, is to prevent, like, I don't want any of you to go through this. And my goal of the course is to teach you how, like, how not to uh, be in these situations. Th that's what I'm trying to do with this, because this is just, this is reality that a lot of people face here. This is, uh, this game is so, it's the real, it's a real game. Uh, so I, I did this breakdown. It was a while back, but if someone's making $15 an hour, 40 hours a week of work, 52 weeks a year working, they would make $31,200 per year in wages when you make minimum wage of $50 per hour. So let's say you select an Xbox cable 
energy drink, cell phone plan, used car, laptop, computer, you'd be left with $26,406. And then, and then paying, um, and then, and then when you, uh, when you pay for all of these expenses here, you would have $4,040 left after paying all those expenses. These required bills. And then if you want to pay for all these surprise expenses down here, which come up, you would be in debt by $3,990 after all those expenses. So yeah, working at the minimum wage is, uh, it doesn't cover everything when you have a family. And even when you don't have family, it's like, it's still really tough. And uh, yeah, it's the, the the income inequality problem in Canada is is really severe, and uh, I think like a lot of people here probably know how bad it is. But a lot of a lot of our politicians and uh, wit rich people in Canada don't understand. Yeah. So this is our next activity. I just put the uh, the link in the chat. So. So click on the link and then we'll get started on this one. Excellent. And we'll get started. Professor? Oh, yeah. We can't see the question. So, uh, how this works is un so, unfortunately, the, um, the, so how this works is when on your Kahoot, when you log into Kahoot, it doesn't show the answers on your Kahoot. You gotta have the other, this main screen on too. So you can have both screens side by side. Um, what I'll do is, uh, because some people might be on their phones, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll uh, state the question and then state what the colors and the answers are. So the question is, is there such thing as a free lunch? Red is yes, no is blue, yellow is possibly, green is probably. So yeah, I'll just, uh, can you see the question now? Yeah, I'll, I'll say the question and the answer too, and just say which color they are. So the question is, what kind of goods are used to produce consumer goods? And red is non-durable goods, blue is gross domestic product, 
yellow is capital goods and green is incentive. So what is used to illustrate the concept of opportunity cost? Red is circular flow of economic activity. Blue is production possibilities curve. Yellow is the invisible hand and green is the of production. Actions in one part of the country or world have an economic impact on what happens elsewhere. Um, and what that is, is is it economic dependent, interdependence? Is red, opportunity cost blue, yellow is specialization trade off screen? Like, what is that definition? Economics and interdependence, that's the answer. The question is value of the next best alternative that has to be given up for an action that is chosen is the uh, red is trade-off, blue is opportunity benefit, yellow is opportunity cost, green is productivity. So opportunity cost is the right answer. So the question is, as an economic term, land includes red is work people do, blue is machinery, yellow is natural resources, green is consumer goods. The right answer is yellow natural resources. Something gained by making a choice is red is cost, blue is benefit, yellow is labor, and green is net loss. Blue is the benefit, the right answer, benefit is right answer. The question is an economy moving forward due to individuals acting in their own self-interest. That's, is that red, translucent glove, blue is semi-visible finger, yellow is invisible hand, or green is tangible and appendage. Which one would it be? So it's invisible hand is the right answer. Balancing finite resources with unlimited desires is uh, red, lack of choices, blue is shortages, yellow is scarcity, green is overabundance of resources. Yellow scarcity is the right answer. person who organizes the factors of production, red is land, blue is capital, yellow is entrepreneur, and green is, and green is labor. Which one is the right answer? Yellow is entrepreneur is the right answer. Measure of how much is produced with a given amount of resources in a specific period of time. Red is productivity, blue is microeconomics, yellow is macroeconomics, green is economic growth. Red is productivity, right answer. Uh, this examines the choice of individuals concerning one product, one firm, or one industry. Is it 
productivity, red, microeconomics, blue, yellow, macroeconomics, or green, economic growth. Blue microeconomics is the right answer. Branch of economics that examines the behavior of the whole economy at once. What is that? Uh, productivity is red, microeconomics is blue, macroeconomics is yellow, green is economic growth. Yellow is the macroeconomics, the right answer. Then which is not one of the three basic questions of economics? Uh, red is when to produce, blue is what to produce, yellow is how to produce, and green is for whom to produce. Person who uses a good or service, red is entrepreneur, blue is disaster, yellow is re retailer, green is consumer. Accumulation of those economic products that are tangible, scarce, useful, and transferable. Red is utility, blue is value, yellow is wealth, and green is human capital. Yellow wealth is the right answer. Worth that can be expressed in dollars and cents. The utility is red, blue is value, yellow is wealth, or green is like human capital. Value is the right answer. Fast to be useful and provide satisfaction. Is that red utility? Blue value, yellow wealth, or human capital green. Red is utility is the right answer. And then some of the skills, abilities, health, and motivation of people. Uh, red is utility, blue is value, yellow is wealth, green is human capital. Which one would be the right answer? Green is human capital, the right answer. An example of a dis division of labor is Red home craft business, blue assembly line production, yellow classroom education, green is entrepreneurship. Blue is assembly line production is the right answer. And then our use of resources in a way that maximizes the output of goods and services. Uh, red is productivity, blue is successful, yellow is efficiency, and green is capitalism, which will be the right answer. Yellow efficiency is the right answer. Great job, Chris. Great job, Wesley. Great job, Justin. Excellent work, everybody. Wow, great work. Excellent job, NCA, or excellent job, 
Brian, great job, everybody else. Awesome work, everyone. Great, great participation today, everybody. So we got through everything today. Great work, everyone. Very great class. I am going to close it out for today. But does anyone else have any questions for uh, today? Professor, um, I have yeah. a question about the games. First of all, it yes. was so much fun. They're so oh, thanks. great. They're great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, are they graded or something? I mean, um, the in class games that we just played. Uh, they aren't. Uh, it's just for practice, and uh, it, it's just for practice. Like the, uh, like I do it a lot in class because I know that uh, when I was in teachers' college, I learned that uh, people learn best through like learning by doing, and I learn best by like kinesthetic learning. So that's why I do a lot of quiz games in class, and uh, I know. Uh, I find all my students, they work best that way. And then I learned that using videos works a lot too. So putting those in and then asking questions and teamwork exercises are great too. Um, oh, thanks, Sherry. And uh, thank you, Sherry. Uh, and then Justin, um, the so the smart book assignment. So I'll bring up that one again. Uh, it's not like I want you to do them week by week, but they're not, like, if you can't f finish them until, so, like, I want you to do this stuff week by week, chapter one, etc. but it's, it's not, like, if you need until the end of the semester, that's fine, but I just want you to do it week by week, so you don't have, like, a million things to do at the end, but I know that a lot of you have a lot of stuff on the side that you're doing so i want you to so i want um i'm giving you until the end if you need that time the end of the semester to complete all this stuff uh so there's no real difference it's just it's just called something like there's no real difference um yeah so uh yeah there's no real difference between both it's just a different name Yes, so the link to purchase the book, it is, so I'll provide that. So the link to purchase the book is put in the chat and then I'll state it in, I'll state it in uh, the, uh, the Blackboard. But yeah, great class, everybody. Uh, it's great to have uh, an engaged class that, you know, wants to participate and do all the exercises. I'm going to post the right now. So connect registration. So it'll be it'll be under course con learning content and then McGraw Hill connect registration. Are the assignments locked or behind the book, or is it just for study material? I'll, what I'll do is I'll bring it up. I'm just going to bring it up right now. So connect. I'll share my screen. So 